Um, so again, if we're doing the derivative or finding the inverse of this function, or actually, first of all, let's find the domain and range. Well, let's think about this. To find the domain, again, we're looking for, are there any restrictions on our domain? Is it possible for us to divide by 0? No. Is it possible for us to take the square root of a negative number? No. There's no fractions here with a variable in the denominator, and there's no square roots or even roots with a variable under them. Does everybody agree with me? So there's no restrictions on our domain. So our domain is negative infinity to infinity all day long. All right. Look for those restrictions. If you don't see the restrictions, it's all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. To find the range, though, we need to find the inverse, find the domain of the inverse. <laughs> Excuse me. So, um, th 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 th. so let's go ahead and find the inverse. So step one, replace f of x with y. Step two, swap x and y. Step three, solve for y. Well, how do we solve for y? y is squared. Same way we solve for y in the last one. Use your inverse operations. First thing we want to do is undo addition and subtraction. How do you undo y squared? Well, we practice this in our focus lessons, right? To undo y squared, we have to take the square root. Actually, I'm sorry, we have to introduce the square root. Huh? It is 2. I would 3 come from. I don't know. You tell me. Well, that's why I asked. I don't know. That's why I was asking you. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> All right. So you have y squared. But I said, I, I said the word introduce the square root because I want you guys that to trigger something in your brain. Whenever you introduce the square root, we have to remember plus or minus. That's really, really important because now um, I have plus or minus the square root of x minus 2 equals y. So what we can say is f inverse equals plus or minus the square root of x minus 2. This is really, really important. We'll talk about this later. Um, but what you guys can see is there's basically two of them. We have two functions. We have the positive and we have the negative. Um, the domain. Oh, yes, okay. So if we look at this, do we have restrictions now on our domain? No. It doesn't matter if it's plus or minus, right? It's what's inside it. So what, we have numbers under the radical. What we've been doing over and over and over, whenever you have numbers under a radical, you set them greater than or equal to 0, and you solve. x has to be greater than or equal to 2. How do you write that in domain notation? 2 to infinity. Right? So the domain of my inverse function is 2 to infinity. That tells me that my range of my original function has to be 2 to infinity. So again, to find the domain is just like how we've always found the domain. To find the range,